Welcome everyone to tonight's school committee meeting. Tonight is Thursday, March 15th. Um, we have uh, some members of our music department here tonight, so I think we're going to start off with, with that group. Do you mind? Sorry, I'm looking over there. <laughs> over there. <laughs> so if you want right. to go, if you want to go to the microphone to introduce over there, yeah. 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 Um, my name is Jill Baudet. I am one of the music teachers here at the high school. Um, tonight, um, we thank you for having us here. Tonight, I have two of my percussionists, um, Amanda Soares and Bridget Thomas. Um, they're going to be playing a piece for you. Um, just a little advertising for our department. Um, we have our percussion ensemble who just went to a percussion festival. Uh, we rated superior at the festival, which is the highest honor that we could get. Um, so the, these two seniors are, have been part of the percussion ensemble for four years. So um, we also will be presenting at our concert next Tuesday, March 20th, here at the high school. It'll feature percussion, uh, concert choir, and one of our orchestras. Um, and also, I had to pull these ladies away from our um, show that's rehearsing tonight opening night is tomorrow uh, for Cinderella. So they're, they're highly involved in our program. So tonight, they're gonna play a duet for you. Uh, Amanda is playing the xylophone. People always ask me, what are the names of these instruments? So Amanda's on the xylophone, and Bridget is on the marimba. So um, hope you enjoy. The song is called Winter Joy by Rudd Weiner. Amanda and Bridget, that was beautiful. And um, any questions or comments for students? Well done, thank you. Just thank you. Nice yeah. job. Excellent job, very nice. nice. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So our first order of business tonight is the approval of, of minutes. Um, we do have the which minutes we have. We have the minutes of the March 1st, 2018 regular session. Do I have a motion to approve those minutes? Motion from Scott, seconded by John. All in favor? All right. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so the next order of business is announcements, correspondence, and, and, and distributions. Uh, we do have uh, three members of our, our committee um, 
tonight is their last uh, official meeting. Uh, they do have some budget meetings, um, some negotiations, and some subcommittee meetings left, so we're not letting them off the hook just yet, but this is their, their, their last uh, official meeting. So we did want to take some time to recognize John, Scott, and, and Mike for their, their service. Um, I know all, all three uh, men cared very deeply about uh, the town of Milford and um, have made a number of contributions to, to this board and to the, the school district, and it's, it's very much appreciated. I know the sacrifices all three of you ha have made, um, and you've been very valuable members of, of this board and um, you know, great resources for, for me and the, and the rest of the committee. It's very much appreciated. So uh, I'm going to open it up to the, the committee here if anyone has any comments or... I'll just start. Um, congratulations, or, or good luck, or all right, I don't know. But <laughs> it's been a pleasure working with you guys. Mike, you've taught me so much on how this works and, and what avenues to take and how to deal with certain situations. John, you've taught me a lot of other things as well with just contracts and the way how town works and public meetings. And, and Scott, you've you told me to throw my hat in the ring, so I, here I am because of you. So, Happy New Year. Thank you. It's, <laughs> it's been, it's been a hat? pleasure. <laughs> I've loved working with you guys, and I, I, you guys have done, all, each one of you have done something special for this town, and no one can take that away from you. You guys etched your name in Milford's history, and it's, that's huge. So I wish you guys the best of luck in your future. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so I wrote a few things, so I'll, I like to be wordy. Uh, Six paragraphs. I know. Well, Scott knows I started writing on a subway napkin when I saw him at Subway tonight. Um, so Scott, start with you. Um, you've been steadfast in your dedication to and passion for a school district. Um, your commitment to the work has been exceptional. You've been serving us for two solid terms, which is a lot of blood, sweat, and tears on your part on behalf of our students and our schools. Um, you've always brought varied and thoughtful ideas to the table. Um, you've always demonstrated your pride and your investment in the Milford Public Schools, um, and certainly from the perspective of being an alumni and homegrown Milfordian yourself. Um, I really wish you well in your respite from public office, um, probably briefly, um, but well, knowing full well that you'll be finding other means to support our town and, and certainly our schools. So thank you for everything you've done for us. Thank you, Jeff. Um, John, um, when I think of you, I think of someone who always does his homework. Um, you're always prepared to address issues with data and facts and research. I remember seeing you sitting with lots of stacks of, of things when we were getting ready to do some work. Um, I look at you as someone who's been quiet and reflective, but a really productive member of our committee. Um, I th one thing I've admired about you is your ability to always kind of successfully balance that role of school committee member with, you know, what our roles really entail. and. You've always been really respectful to um, the work that the school staff does, and I hear you say a lot, I'm going to defer to what Kevin thinks, and, and I, I think... That's brilliant, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, really? al it's always a good, you know, if you can't come up with anything else, that's always a good thing <laughs> to say. <laughs> 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 right. Um, I'll defer to Kevin. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'm really grateful for the work you've done for us, and I wish you best in your next chapter. Thank you very much. Um, Mike, thinking of you and... Um, the time you've been here, you've really been an incredible role model for me. And um, I still think of myself as a new member of the school committee. I don't know what that'll feel like at, at, during the next meeting, but I still feel that way tonight. Um, you were really one of the first people who reached out to me on the campaign trail with a lot of sincerity and really wanting to help as I was trying to navigate my way as a newer member. Um, for me, a, as a committee member, you've really been a source of strength and knowledge. Um, professionalism during my time working with you. Um, our schools are truly better because Mike Walsh has been an advocate for our schools. Um, and I'm glad our athletes are here tonight. We, we have a three-peat um, award-winning cheerleading team here in Milford. And um, when I think about you, I think that despite their, all of the awards that they won, the best cheerleader that we have for the Milford Public Schools is Mike Walsh. And you will definitely be missed. So I wish you the best, and I know you're going to continue to serve our town. And your other very important role is on the bus select <laughs> Thank so you so best much. wishes. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. You're show me up, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I know. See, but you can do it from here. <laughs> <laughs> from here. <laughs> so what can you say that hasn't already been said? And Jen is eloquent as usual, and Joey from the heart. So I have to say, you know, thank you, because each and every one of you is as um, has personally helped me out, and I am the new member of the board, so 
Um, and I also don't know what that's going to feel like <laughs> you know, moving forward. But um, John, Scott, and Mike have been role models for me. Um, when you think about the amount of tenure and experience in the three of you, it's actually quite staggering. So, you know, the fact that, that we don't have that option of reflecting on the experience that you have anymore moving forward, or at least from a board perspective, you know, is quite daunting because you've added so much significantly over the years um, to both the school and through the town. So I personally just want to say thank you. Um, each one of you has definitely impacted my decision to run and, and the things that I have been able to do on the board as well. So um, from the bottom of my heart, thank you very much for everything. Thank you. Thank you. So before we start, we have, we have gifts for the, uh, the three. Oh, right. The three retiring members. Let's pop sockets. Do you want to get them with their families and take a picture? Or what are you want to do? Yeah. All right, let's do So maybe if we could have um, the families come forward. Maybe we'll start with um, John and then we go Scott and Mike. So John, why don't you come up first? <laughs> we'll go right in the center here. No wonder these meetings take so long. I'm going to try to surprise you. Mr. Walsh? Yes, I do, Kevin. <laughs> yes. Greg, you know how to work that, right? Not really. <laughs> Not really. If it flashes in your eyes, it's the wrong direction. Right, ready? How many will we take? That's one side. Yeah, right. Oh, I missed it. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, Malik. <coughs> Does this guy come out? Yeah. So some of this is going to be repetitive, but I did prepare just some quick remarks as well. Um, is this the PowerPoint? No, it's not the PowerPoint. <laughs> <laughs> You've got that look to look forward to, baby. Get all excited. Um, I want to thank Mike, Scott, and John for their service to the Milford Schools and the Milford community. The work of the school committee members is critical to the effective operation of the school district, but it is a thankless job. Each of the three exiting members took their role seriously and provided leadership in a time of incredible growth for the Milford Public Schools. During their tenure with the Milford Public Schools, there were a number of significant accomplishments, including the completion of the new Woodland Elementary School, the rebuild of the technology infrastructure of the entire district, the rollout of the one-to-one -one blended initiative, will be complete, which will be complete in September, and numerous teaching and learning initiatives that are, that are, that are too, um, too many to list here. Um, it's difficult to find committed individuals who give so freely of their time for the greater public good. And I don't think people really understand how much time, and you guys, you three um, folks who are running cover your ears right now, <laughs> how, much, <laughs> how, much, how much time um, each of these members truly invests on a yearly, weekly, and even daily basis um, for the Milford Public Schools. Um, we have three of the best leaving us today. Mike Walsh has served on the school committee for nine years and is a current member of the Board of Selectmen, and, and he really represents the best of public service. Mike, I've appreciated your support and your unwavering commitment to the students of Milford. You provided a steady hand throughout your tenure, and your leadership will be missed on this committee. Thank you. Thank Scott Harrison <coughs> has served for six years on the Milford School Committee and is a consistent and passionate voice for our most vulnerable students. Scott also advocated for our arts program because he sees the value of a well-rounded educational experience for all students. Scott, thank you for your service and your love of Milford, and the Milford Public Schools will, be, will miss you on Thursday evenings in the future. 
John Erickson has served on the school committee for three years and has been intimately engaged in the budget process and a number of important initiatives over these past three years, and he's been a champion for our students. His support of our high school, college, and career readiness initiatives has been invaluable for our progress. John, I appreciate your thoughtful leadership and insight. Thank you. I'm going to miss all three of you. And again, I appreciate your selfless, selfless not selfish, selfless <laughs> service to the uh, community. I have had the privilege of getting to know each of you over the past five years and can equally attest to your character, compassion, and focus on making the Milford Public Schools better every day. So thank you. Thank you. <coughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So I, it's all been said. <laughs> Not much more I, 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 can, I can add to the conversation. I think all three of you, you know how I feel about you and, and, and um, how much I value the, the commitment that you've brought to this, this board. Um, you know, as Jen mentioned, John, you've always approached things in such a, a thoughtful way and it's been an extremely strong advocate for uh, our students and uh, an advocate for the entire community of, of Milford. And um, Scott, uh, you know, it's certainly a um, very active member of this board, as, as Kevin just highlighted, all, you know, all of your areas of focus over the past six years and um, certainly very outspoken within this <laughs> among this board. I was hoping I was getting the shy, quiet one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. John's Maybe a more someday. reserved one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, and, it, you know, Mike, it, it, I, I've gotten it to know you over the course of the past six years, and we've become very good friends. And um, I really appreciate um, how you've taken me under your wing over those years, and I've learned a lot from you, and I've learned a lot about how to uh, approach issues and, and, and challenges. and. Um, you know, someone I, I really have a lot of respect for. So, uh, thank you for for uh, for helping me over over these years. You're welcome. Appreciate it. So, can we get one round of applause for these guys? Yeah. <laughs> we'll open it up to. Why don't you go first, Mike, since you're the elder. So I, uh, I promised myself, I actually, I got a phone call from my traveling friend. Every time I talk to him, he's somewhere in the world, and he's boarding a plane this afternoon, and he says to me, uh, are your ch uh, kids going to be there tonight? <laughs> and I said, no. And driving here, I was like, oh, my God, I never thought of that. That was a setup. <laughs> and I pulled in, I saw the dealer plate. But um, So anyway, I promised myself that I'm going <laughs> to... I'm going to keep myself together. So uh, I made a couple of notes here. And uh, to the people that are here tonight that are running for school committee, um, I wish you the best. I wish you the best. Um, it's a big set of shoes. It's a lot of responsibility. You're going to have days where you make decisions, and you've got to go with your gut. You've got to go with your gut. And uh, that's going to be a hard thing to do. But at the end of the day, at the end of the day, nine years down the road, I can tell you that you're always going to make out. You're always going to make out. And sometimes you're not going to make the right decision. But the right decision that you are making is to, is to represent this community. And uh, I was at the forum last night, and there were a couple of shots taken at this district that I didn't appreciate. And I was going to make a couple of comments because I could have. But I didn't want to take away from you the candidates that are running. When you sit here tonight and you see the music that just got played before us, and you see the student athletes that are waiting to get up here to be recognized, and you see everything that goes on in this district, this is a great district. And you're the next generation and just continue to take it to the next level. And you will. And people talked last night about level three. Yeah, and I could go on for a lot of reasons why we are. But we're working hard to get back to where we need to be. And you are the next, the next group with the group that we leave behind tonight that's gonna take it to the next level. When I first got elected, um, my first night, um, I'll never forget it. it, was the old days when the room was square. And Lori Baranowskis, who I have the utmost respect for, love her daily, walked in and she said to me, and she and I ran a heated race. And she walked in, she tapped me on the shoulder, and she said, uh, can I give you some advice? I said, I'll take anything, anything you can give me. 
she said, close this and open these. And I never forgot that. So that's my advice to you, too. I'm not saying don't have your own agenda, but I'm saying come in and learn. Come in and learn. Learn from people like Joe Marias, great guy, seasoned guy, Ben Chairman, Joe Calories, Jimmy, Jen. Listen to them. Okay, when you have a question, pick up the phone and call them. And I think what's more importantly, and I talk about this all the time, and I'm going to get lengthy tonight, and I'm sorry, but <laughs> is that although there are seven members running for school committee, you're surrounded by veteran school committee members. So sitting on the board of selectmen, you have three people that are all former school committee members. Don't be afraid to call us up and say, what do you think of this? I got this situation going on. I want to go this way. What do you think? Um, over the years, I've been very fortunate. Um, I served with some great committee members, great committee members. Um, and I'm not going to name them all, and I could name them all, but um, just some great people that really, as, uh, as Kevin said, had this district at heart. And we truly do. We truly do. And people criticize us, and that's okay. That's okay. Um, I was fortunate enough to serve with two great superintendents. Um, Bob Tremblay, um, in my opinion, uh, and I talk openly about this, um, left the school district and it never missed a beat. And he put key people like Kevin McIntyre in place and Kevin took Craig Consigli. When I got elected, Craig Consigli was a principal. Today he's the assistant superintendent of schools. So the message that sends to me as a member is that if we can always promote from within, because you don't want your good people saying to themselves that, why am I going to stay here? Because they're going to go on the outside. I've been here, I've worked hard, I've done everything I need to do and promote from within. So Bob Tremblay, in my opinion, um, and I'm not ashamed to say I love the guy. I do. And uh, he was a great mentor, great mentor. But he passed the torch to a guy by the name of Dr. Kevin McIntyre. And he's doing the same thing. He's doing the same exact thing. And uh, that's why I'm so proud of this district. When you see what goes on in this district on a daily basis, it makes you proud. It makes you <laughs> really, really proud. I'd be remiss <coughs> if I didn't talk about the administrators, all the administrators, and the teachers. And everybody, the caf cafeteria staffs and the custodial staffs and everybody that makes this district a great place, a great place. Um, they give it their time. They give it their service. Um, you know, when someone's going to make a remark to you and they're going to say, ah, those teachers, you know, they go in at 7.30 in the morning, they're done by 3 o'clock at night, don't talk to me about that. Don't talk to me about that because I've been in these buildings. And I've seen teachers 4 and 5 o'clock at night. And I've seen teachers try and give their life, their life. Um, and, and when I say that, I say that, um, I guess I'll go back to last night. MCAS came up and SATs came up last night. Let me tell you something. There's nothing prouder. There's nothing prouder than sitting at graduation and watching those kids go across the stage. Because when you see those kids go across the stage, and I mean kids of every walk of life, as a school committee member, you've done your job. You've done your job. <coughs> Bob Tremley talked about it. Dr. McIntyre talks about it. Mr. Consigli talks about it. All the teachers and the administrators talk about it. Not everybody's going to college. Not everybody's going to college. And thank God a lot of our students do, in fact, go to college, OK? But when you sit there at graduation and you see all those kids walk across the stage and you see their parents in the stage either in the gym or on the field, and I've sweated an awful lot in the gymnasium <laughs> over the years, but um, as a school committee member, you've done your job and you should be proud. You should walk out and you should hold your head up high, your head up high and say, you know what, I did a great job. I did what I had to do. And the last thing that I want to talk about is, and I, 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 I truly apologize, I hope I didn't leave anybody out, just two things I want to talk about. I've sat here for nine years. 
and um, no disrespect, the superintendent and the assistant superintendent and all the special ed directors and, and all the directors and come in and do presentations and, and uh, they get a lot of credit, credit they deserve. <clears throat> but in my heart tonight, one person that uh, deserves a lot of credit and doesn't get it, and she's not here tonight, I did talk to her tonight, is Kathy Perry. And uh, she's a financial whiz. She's what keeps this district going every single day, every day. So my recommendation to you is, and I don't mean to keep talking to you, but I'm just trying to give you some advice as an old season member, lean on her, lean on her. She's a genius. She's brilliant. She's always there. Um, my nine years of being here, we never hiccuped, never hiccuped. And there were times, there were times where we uh, went before the finance committee, went before the board of selectmen, and uh, she always, uh, she always gave us good advice, guidance, and got us through it. And so, to Kathy, I want to say thank you. Um, great, great job. And uh, I re my recommendation to all of you is to continue to lean on her. She's a, she's a huge source of information. And the last thing that I have to say to you is that, and I know you do, I guess I'm talking to the candidates tonight, I don't know why, <laughs> but um, family, family's important. And uh, you gotta have your family behind you. Because as Dr. McIntyre said, um, <coughs> I can tell you honestly only because I sit in both seats right now, it's a lot more work being a school committee member than it is being a selectman. If you're gonna do it right, if you're gonna do it right. You're gonna try and make events. Um, you got seven schools. I think Paul Mazzucchelli did a great job years ago, although we kind of got away from it. Every school committee member got assigned to school. It used to be we used to go into school opening days and, and when I first got elected, they said, oh, here come the suits. Um, and we got away from that. So we assigned each member a school and that was your responsibility through the year. Um, You've, you know, just through the year, trying to be present to as many functions as you can, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of time away from your family. Um, I said to somebody today, I'm excited. When I, uh, when I ran for election, <clears throat> I ran on, I had no dog in the fight. My kids were already graduated and out of the district. And I, I, uh, I thought to me that personally was important. After watching the uh, forum last night, I'm so excited, so excited to see people running for office that do in fact have children in the district. Um, not that I feel that what I did was wrong, but I'm just excited to see that. <clears throat> but before I finish, I just want to say again that um, family's important and you got to keep them close and uh, they got to buy in and mine, mine did, mine did. And, uh, so to everybody sitting here at the table tonight, as board members, I want to say thank you. It was a pleasure to serve with all of you. Um, I will miss you. I'm not going anywhere, but uh, it was a pleasure. It was a pleasure to see, you know, see all of you get elected. Craig, it was a pleasure to see you grow. Um, Kevin, same with you. And uh, it was just a real, real pleasure. And it, it, it truly, truly will be missed. And uh, I just want to say thank you to all of you for your years of uh, support. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. Should I Mike go last? All right. Um, we'll go down the line with Scott. Sure. Thanks, so. Um, first and foremost, I just want to say thank you to uh, certainly thank you to the people of Milford for this uh, for this opportunity to serve you um, over this last six years. It's uh, it's tr it's truly been a humbling experience. Um, you know, we, we you know we hear from time to time as committee members that uh, oh, school committee is a thankless job. Uh, at times, it can feel like that, um, but I would certainly argue that it's not. There, there's certainly more than enough thanks that you get. You get it from <coughs> being able to see students come in um, <clears throat> and be recognized. Getting it from you know, and, and candidly. You know the the accomplishments of this board. We have seven people 
seven community members from the town of Milford that are running because they feel they can make a difference and they want to be part of this. They've seen the work that's being done and some of it they agree with, some of it they think they can help add to it and, move, and make additional improvements. Um, and that's very, very powerful. So um, it has been tremendously humbling to be able to serve the people in the town of Milford. Uh, I can promise you I've always done my best. That's what I promised I would do when I ran six years ago. Um, as I promised I would do my best, I promised that uh, I was going to make mistakes, and I know I did. Um, I sat there with Mike on Al Correa's show uh, and sat in that chair, and I got the same advice from him that he just gave to the three of you, uh, which is listen, and that same advice that he got from Lori, and I did. Um, I listened a lot, and I learned a lot from you, Mike, and, and certainly appreciate your, your guidance and your help, and again, from all the committee members that I've had the pleasure of of, uh, of sharing these tables with and sharing my uh, my Thursday evenings with over the last six years. So, um, and, you know, I certainly just want to wish you all luck. Uh, those that are running for office, um, for anybody that's never had the opportunity to put their name on a ballot, it's a very personal thing. Um, I've had an opportunity to speak to each of the candidates running at one point or another. Um, and that's been a topic of conversation with I think most of you at this point is it's a very personal thing when it's your name that's on that ballot. And everyone behind this table can certainly appreciate that. Um, and that's very humbling in and of itself, just going through that process. So I wish you all the best of luck. Um, enjoy it. This is the fun part. Um, and then you get in, and, it's a lot of, and, it's, and then it's even more fun. And it's a lot of work, but it's a lot of fun, and it's definitely worth it. Um, to my fellow committee members, thank you. Um, you push me to think differently. Every one of you that I've served with, everyone that's on the board today, everyone that I've served with previously, um, you've opened my eyes to th look at things in a very different way than I ever would have. Um, you've opened me to your experiences. You've welcomed me in some cases to your home, to your families, to your lives. Uh, we've spent a lot of time together. Um, I'm still a numbers guy. Nothing's changed there. So I'm going to go to a couple of numbers. I'll start with Mike. Um, actually, I'll start with John. So John, uh, whether you know it or not, you've attended uh, approximately 80 school committee meetings. Feels like more, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> you mean this year, right? <laughs> right, this week. Um, countless number of subcommittee meetings, um, sup community forums, community activities, and that doesn't include, as the, as the candidates this year are appreciating, the amount of time that you're gone from your family. So um, thank you, John, for your service, and, and uh, it's been a pleasure to serve with you over the last three years here. Um, I certainly wish you all the best of luck in the future. Um, Mike gets the door prize for the night. Um, so, Mike, you've attended approximately 230 school committee meetings. It's a lot of time. Some of them, have, some of them have, have been longer than others. Some have been shorter than others. Um, I think I've contributed to both sides of that, <laughs> making them a little longer, making them a little shorter. Um, but thank you, to you, thank you for your service to the town. You, you've you've done a tremendous job over these last nine years and uh you're not done yet you're you've done double duty for the last 12 months so Thank i you. certainly wish you the best of luck Thank um you. and to my members that are that are continuing on um thank you and 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 good luck to you you have you have a full understanding of the lion's share of work that continues to be ahead of you um i've had an opportunity to serve with each one of you and and gotten to know you in very different ways some of you i knew joey i've known you we will mention how many years sure. more than 230 school committee meetings longer sure. um you know and i remember having that conversation with you that 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 new year's eve when you came to me and said you know i'm thinking about getting involved in the town okay i said oh i got a great idea for well, you that's how it was. um and uh that's how i remember it um and here you are um so you know i know you've got a lot of work to do um jen i met you when you first started running and uh, you know, I, I remember somebody, as we've all get asked when there's a, when there's an election going on. So what do you think of the of the uh, of the candidates they're running? And I said, well, she's got an education background, and I, as I've said on many occasions, I was raised by educators. Um, I no one has the insight that you have coming into this coming into this role. So I certainly wish you the continued success and continued luck to you and your family. Um, I'll get to you. <laughs> Jimmy, uh, you know, I first met you when you first start when you first pulled your papers and started running, and and you know, you were your energy and your passion and your excitement for getting involved and um, the the questions of so so what do I have to do? What and I remember <laughs> looking at you and and going, oh pal, <laughs> you're 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 gonna you're gonna get to see it, 
and you did, and you've done a great job. And, I, and my advice to you and my recommendation was just roll up your sleeves and dive right in. Um, it's, it's drinking from a fire hydrant that first 12 months, as you realized. Um, but you've, added, you've, you've asked great questions and certainly learned a lot, I think, along the way and continuing to add more value as you go along and along. So certainly wish you continued success. Um, Joe, outside of Mike, I've served with you the longest. Um, you know, you've done, a, you've done a great job as chair, um, did a great job as vice chair. You know, you're in your second term as well. Uh, I know the decisions that you've got ahead of you as well as you as you get to the end of each term you get through that thought process and go so do I keep going or what do I do um, but you know I know you were I know when you first came in you came in with lots of ideas and lots of excitement a lot of passion and you've been able to maintain that and that's that's not an easy thing um, this gets tiring this is a lot of work so I, I certainly wish you continued success and um, and just thank you for everything that you've done and, and your continued con contributions to the town and and uh, and helping me as well as I've as I've continued to learn and grow. So, Kevin, um, certainly wish you continued success. Uh, it was great to see you come on board. Um, I remember that first night when when Bob introduced you and said, you know, I think I've got this guy. I said, okay, we'll see. And he said, uh, no, I you know when we charged him. Uh, I'll, I'll go back to what that conversation was, and it was before you were identified um, and before some of you were on the board, because it was approximately five years ago. Um, we had asked Bob Tremblay to find his replacement, for those of you who were, weren't here. Um, that's what we asked. We said if for some reason you were to move on, we want you to identify an assistant superintendent <coughs> that can take, your, that can take your, your role and can take your seat and have the town of Milford not miss a beat. And I think you did that, and that's what we said the night that we appointed you, the night we found out Bob was leaving, um, and, you, and you've continued to do that. So thank you, um, thank you for, for your friendship and for your constant communication, and uh, keep up the great work. I know that uh, I'm very proud to have two students going to this school because I know that and feel very comfortable with you at the helm. So, thank you. Appreciate that. Um, I thank you for that. Uh, Craig, uh, so you and I go back even further. Uh, I first met Craig working actually working at Stacy Middle School. Craig was a health teacher <coughs> years and years and years ago, and, and uh, I don't actually think this ever came out, but I actually did work at Stacy Middle School. I was a behavior specialist um, at Stacy Middle School years and years and years ago, and I met this health teacher who went to the same college that I went to up at Plymouth State um, way back when. And uh, you know, who would have guessed that here here we are together, sitting on this side of the table. Um, I don't think I could have named who the school committee members were at that point, um, but you've done a great job and certainly wish you, as you continue on in your career, um, you've brought a tremendous amount to this role, as you have with every role, so I wish you continued success as well. So, um, I, I just, again, I'll just end with just a thank you. Thank you to the parents, thank you to the people of the town of Milford, thank you to the teachers um, who give tirelessly every single day. Um, you do an amazing job. Uh, and I couldn't be prouder to have been selected for these last six years um, to help support you and represent you. And that's really what I've tried to do for the best of my ability. So uh, thank you all, and we'll continue on. Thank Thanks, Scott. John? Okay, so I guess I want everybody to know that when I got elected to the school committee, I had one ultimate goal for myself, and that was to speak at greater length than my partner Scott here at one meeting. <laughs> Good luck, you, have, Al. you have that tonight. <laughs> no, uh, all kidding aside, uh, most of you know that I, you know I don't speak. I don't speak meeting. at great length. Uh, I think that my actions and my my votes and my sentiments speak more than my language does. But what I do want to do is thank each of you people here at this table tonight, um, all of my fellow committee members. I think you know my goal when I got on the school committee was to help improve the district. Uh, I'm proud to say that that's been the goal of each person sitting here. I'm proud to say that we've accomplished a number of feats that have already been discussed uh, maybe at length tonight, but um, that was my real one goal was to contribute, to, to be a part of a committee that's doing the best they can for the district, for the teachers, for the kids, and everyone in this district. And I want to extend my thanks to Patrick Holland who was on here uh, for my first year, and, and I include him in those sentiments. and. Other than that, I don't think I can say that anything that hasn't been said already, other than I do want to uh, repeat my sentiments, that, or the sentiments about the, the incoming school committee members, everyone that's running for this race, for this seat, and, and thank you for your care and your effort, and I look forward to your contributions.
Thank you. That's it. Thanks, John. All right. Um, thanks, everybody. So I, I, <laughs> our next order of business is invitation to speak. Would anybody like to address the board tonight? No. All right. We have the. We've had a number of student athletes patiently waiting to be recognized, and really appreciate that. So um, the next order of business is the MHS student athlete recognition. Thanks for having us tonight. Um, I, I'd like to have a couple of words for the school committee members later just to say thank you. But um, in, in you know, retrospect, taking a look at these guys and want to get home and get some work going, I think. Um, we're going to have our swim team come up, both our boys and girls swim team, if they would. I'm not sure who wants the, the chairs there. But um, <laughs> we are very fortunate to have dual Hockamock League champions. I think you all know that we are in clearly the most difficult league in Massachusetts, if not New England. So to have one league champion for a season would be fantastic. But we have both. Um, a lot of that is what you folks were talking about, you know, commitment to excellence and working hard and, you know, Milford. And, and believe me, I, I use the term Milfordized. Okay, I've been Milfordized. I feel like it's home now. You know, I, I have the joke that I was born in Milford Hospital, but it took me 40 years to get back here. And I'm just so glad that it's happened because um, you know, I'll talk specifically about this program, then I'm going to turn it over to the coaches, um, and then I'm sure you'll have some you know, words uh, for, the, for our captains and our student leaders here. But this program is really the epitome uh, of what the league would like to have. I can tell you we have the three best coaches in the league. Um, I considered myself sort of a lineup, <coughs> maybe guru. I would not want to line up against these coaches because they have won meets that probably maybe we had – uh, we'll say the other team might have been more talented, and I don't say that negatively. I, I say that these kids work hard, but because of their hard work and because of the creativity of the coaches and the captains and people being willing to swim the 500 when they really swim the 200 or the 50 and all these other people want to do certain things, they'll get the W when other teams won't go that distance or other coaches won't go that distance. Um, before I turn it over to the coaches, I just want to share um, in my short time here, you know, a little over four years, I've been fortunate enough to... Um, nominate Coach Chappie for Coach of the Year two years ago. He was State Coach of the Year. Uh, this year, we nominated him for the Jack McDonald Award, which really is the highest award you can get, much like Linda's Achilles two years ago. Um, so he, he, I'm proud to say that he, he was um, awarded that, and we'll be going together in April, Coach? Was I wrong? Yes. April. April, we'll be going together to a dinner where he's going to receive the highest award that the State Coaches Swim Association gives anybody. So I'll turn it over to you. Turn it over to Coach Janosko, who I still can't pronounce her, her new last name, and, and Coach Chapman. <laughs> um, well, I mean, I I did not swim in the races, and I did not compete in the meets. It's the the kids did it. I we can tell them what to do till we're blue in the face, but they're the ones who actually decide to listen to us and and take our advice and do the workouts we tell them to do, and they're the ones that make everything happen. So. I feel a little strange getting a lot of credit for this because I really <laughs> didn't do it. They did. So, um, I mean, I couldn't be more proud of them because they they do have the faith and they trust us. And when we say, like, no, that's what you're doing today, they go, oh, okay, <laughs> <laughs> they go do it. Um, and it's really, it's such a good group of kids. They, I don't know, they're just amazing. <coughs> they're a great group. They're focused. They listen. They they could pigeonhole different things. They learned how to run swim meets themselves. Um, doing it for 20 some odd years, 27 I think now. Um, this gang is probably the first one that ever knew the score at all times. <laughs> and you can thank this one over here. Like <laughs> she, wanted, she knew the score at all times. Um, they were selfless. They, didn't, they did what they had to do. Uh, these are our captains. Alexa Lanchese, Amber Stearns, um, Gianni Pano, Michael Corey, Dan Pachella. Uh, they're all Hockamock League All-Stars. The boys, by virtue of their performance in the league meet, they won the 200-yard freestyle relay against some top-level swimmers statewide. Uh, the girls were chosen by coaches. Uh, I couldn't vote for him, Kate couldn't vote for him, 
um, but they were nominated by other coaches within the league and voted on as as members of that Hockamock League All-Star team. Um, they all went to the state and sectional. There's great stories to tell. Johnny made the state, the, the sectional meet with his last swim. Not an individual one, it was a, um, it was a leading off a relay, which allows you, Scott would be able to tell you because he swam for the swim team. So he would know that, that a lead swimmer on a relay can qualify for an individual event. Very last swim. And he should have, he hit it right on the number, 52-21. <laughs> right on it. And swam in the state meet. Michael, great kid, great kid. He was a sprinter, but he didn't get the sprint until the last Four five meets of the year when the league was on the top, on the, on the line, <coughs> he did all the grunt work, all the dirty work. All right, Jan, uh, <laughs> Jack of all trades. Uh, had to bar him from warming up in lane one because he could splash <laughs> the scorers table, but they were great. And as Kate said, we sometimes get too much of the credit. They're the guys in the water. Uh, these two in front. You know, I'll say it for the last time. They've, you know, they're fantastic. And as, as Dorothy said to the scarecrow, I'll miss them most of all. They were unbelievable. <laughs> they, they were incredible. <laughs> the, every single kid on the team got a personal note from them be, with their races. You know, they were in to see me at six o'clock in the morning. They were down to see Kate when she got there. What's the lineup? And from there, they wrote up an individual card for each of their teammates. This is what you're swimming. This is what you got to be ready for. This is what you can do to help us win. And they hung them up in their locker room each and every time we went out. With a piece of candy. <laughs> so I give them a lot of credit. I thank them. Uh, they are truly all stars. And it was a season to remember. And we, we have won the Hawk. We've been in there for six years. And we've won eight boys and girls four times each. So thank you for having us. Congratulations to the other teams uh, for their successes. It was a great winner. So. Thanks, everybody. First off, Kate, I'd like to say thank you very, very much what you've done. Uh, Peter, you as well. You've come to the town. You've done a phenomenal job. To the athletes, congratulations, congratulations. But um, I want to tell a little story. So um, every Sunday after church, I stop in at Oliva's Market. And uh, two weeks ago, I ran into a guy by the name of Coach Chappie. <laughs> and uh, I've served on this committee for nine years, as everybody knows. And we started a conversation. 20 minutes later, I walked out of Oliva's Market and I said to myself, amazing. That's what makes this district this district. And uh, he wasn't bragging. He wasn't bragging at all. We were just having a conversation, two men together. And I sincerely from my heart want to say thank you. The commitment that people give to this district. I was talking to a gentleman yesterday, a retired teacher. I said, how many years do you teach? He said, 38. And everybody knows every year when we bring the teachers in that are retiring, and I always say to them, I don't know how long you've been here, 38, 37, 36, 35, and I'm like, wow, this is unbelievable. But it's people like you, and I sincerely mean this, Chappie, and it's people like you, Kate, you make a difference, and Peter, you make a difference. You shape their lives because you truly, truly care. And it's people like us to put our names, as Scott said, on a ballot, and we run for election, and yeah, we stand outside and we freeze our butts off on election day because we want to make a difference. The difference that we want to make is for them. And I just want to say, I know tonight's my last meeting, I sincerely, sincerely want to say thank you to all of you. Uh, Chappie, particular, um, great job. Thank you for everything you gave to this district. And, um, and I'm, I'm not ashamed to mention that uh, you're of the generation that got rift <laughs> and uh, came back. And came back. <laughs> you didn't. You didn't walk away with anger. You came back. You came back. Said, "I'm going to make a difference. If I get the opportunity to come back to this district, I'm going to do it." And you did it. You did it. And so I truly, from my heart, want to say thank you. 
and you, you know you're retired and you're still coaching and you know um we won't let him leave no, <laughs> no. that's not a joke you know and i used to i used to i used to tell i used to tell my son all the time i used to say you think you you think coach is teaching you the game of football you think coach is teaching you the game of basketball coach is teaching you the game of life the game of life you're going to get knocked down you can stay down or you can get up dust yourself off and say all right let's move on from here so great job to all of you thank you so much so we're, we're very oh sorry go ahead I just want to congratulate each one of you guys um, phenomenal job great season uh, certainly this is not just an isolated event um, it, and I know that you know each of you there's just the contributions you continue to make to your teammates to your power, to your peers and to the schools and, and you know really being continue to be those role, mo role models for all of your peer groups and for each other as well so uh, congratulations! Thank you all for for what you, all that you've done, and all the work, and all the sweat, and the tears, and everything else that goes into it. Uh, sweating, you know, swimming might not be a contact sport, but there's oh boy, is it a lot of work uh, from somebody who did it. And from what I understand, he's mellowed over the years. So we only threaten to drown him once a lap. So, uh, Chappie, it's. Uh, you know, from the bottom of my heart, to, as it's my last meeting as well, I know I'll see you around town, but keep up the great work. You need the date for the alumni meet? Yeah, you tell me what. <laughs> you tell me what, and I will be there to oh, watch. So we're obviously very proud of everything you accomplished, not, not only in the pool, but, but outside of the pool. When I, when I look at the, the five of you, I know you're, you're very active uh, within the, the school community. You're, musicians, your honor roll students, um, you know, you represent everything that we're trying to do here. You're extremely well-rounded and um, you know, we're proud of the way uh, you, you handle yourself, both in the pool and outside the pool. So we do have some gifts for you. Uh, you probably already have some of these, but we'll <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you want to put mine coming up, some pop sockets. Congratulations. There you go, congratulations. You're welcome. Thank you. 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 To the finest facility mm -hmm. that a high school can offer here. Mm -hmm. That's beyond, second to the kids and the athletes. It's that facility that does it. And if you can do us one little favor, mm -hmm. you guys do. <laughs> what we do need to make us the feature facility. In yeah. 45 years, there have been two sets of blocks in there. We could get a yeah. long range plan will contribute, we got to get new blocks in there before Ms. Parsons swims her senior year. <laughs> I will make it a goal for a story. <laughs> Thank you. You know, can I, I, just, I have to add one more thing, because now that you said that, um, <laughs> sorry, because I know uh, this is long, no, but um, you mentioned at the beginning, Kate, about it being the kids, mm -hmm. and I did have the privilege of attending your banquet. And the things that you said about five captains tonight, you made comments about every single swimmer on that team. And when those kids got up to get their certificates or their letters or whatever it was, what you have done on this swim team is you have created a climate and a culture that kids feel included. And a young freshman who's very trepidatious and tender and nervous felt included. And that's a testament to all of you as captains and the collegial feel that you have created on that team of inclusiveness and in this day and age when we talk about wanting people and kids especially to feel like a part of something um, you have done that so it's been duly noted that you want the blocks and um, <laughs> we'll bring that up with Kathy Perry when she's back but congratulations to all of you you, you earned that thank you thank you, thank you. So I'll ask our hockey uh, contingency to come on up. We were really fortunate this year, um, again, competing in the most difficult. You hear me say that a thousand times over the next 10 or 15 years. Um, but 
This sure. this was a this was a special season for this crew here. Um, this was their first championship, I believe, in, his, in the history of the program. Um, and so to have three league championship teams in the winter, um, I felt particularly excited about. But but we're really excited about what these folks did because they've really chiseled out a nice uh, reputation for our program that is still growing and still um, coming together. With you know Hopedale, Millis, and Milford all put together in this co-op. But I'll I'll defer to. You know, our coaches here, Coach Greg, I still have trouble with his, Le Le Lebossier, I'm, I'm Le 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 uh, so we're French and <laughs> I still can't get it right. I, I was coach, uh, close, but um, no, he's done a great job. He also coaches the soccer team over there and I really admire the way he runs the program. Um, I will at the end talk a little bit about the guy on the right because he set a, a couple of his own records over here uh, throughout the time, but uh, I'll turn it over to these guys. And One thing I want to mention that I think was really, really easily detectable in the swim Team and it will be detectable here and on everybody we talk to. We talk about leadership. We really, we put a huge emphasis on leadership. Talking from you folks that trickles down to our administrators, that trickles down to our teachers, to our coaches, to our student athletes, our, our families, our parents. It's that relentless pursuit of excellence. It's, hey, if you want to rock and roll seven or eight days a week, we'll create a ninth day, whatever you want to do. And I got to tell you, these guys practice at five o'clock in the morning. Uh, this crew will sometimes practice at six o'clock in the evening. It, it doesn't matter. Whenever we get the ice time, they take it. Uh, there are certain times where even before a game, maybe they don't get ice time, so they've got to be creative with their practices. And I just admire the way that they don't make excuses. They just find a way. And, and I'm really impressed with what they've done. And I'll, I'll turn it over to Coach, and I'll, I'll turn it over to our, our leadership <coughs> there, and we'll, we'll go from there. But very proud of them. Um, yeah, I can't say enough great things about Milford, obviously. Um, this, this partnership has been phenomenal. Um, you know, it's not easy keeping, uh, we actually have five schools, um, you know, for the one co-op, but uh, bringing Milford aboard two years ago, um, I think it was great for both schools. Um, we've been successful last year. We did make the tournament for the first time. Um, so Milford obviously gave us some talented players, but it's a great group of kids, easy to coach. Um, like Pete said, we're, we're in the rink at 5 a.m. Don't complain, they're there all the time working hard. And obviously you can see with the, the results over the last couple of years, uh, you know, they, they should be very proud. Um, you know, they've made history. Last year they made history making the tournament for the first time ever. Um, our co-op's been in existence five years, so, you know, they made the tournament last year, uh, and we t actually took the team that won the state championship to two overtimes, and they beat us, uh, which was heartbreaking, but we got back this year, and, uh, <coughs> you know, winning the Russell Conference was, was a huge accomplishment. They went 7-1 and one in the conference, um, really dominated the conference, and, um, all, the, all these kids had a, had a lot to do. Um, you know, leadership, Aiden was our captain for the last two years. Um, obviously, talented player, you know, you'll see that uh, with the amount of points he's, he's had. But he's a great leader and a great kid, and a lot of the kids look up to him and, and see what he does out there. So it was e very easy um, to have someone like him kind of at, almost as a second coach out there. So, um, and then Matt Shaver, who's also a leader for us uh, from Milford, goalie, um, Kyle Mita, also a, one of the extra captains as well, and RJ Stansberry too. Um, and then we got some younger guys here um, who, who contributed a lot uh, to the program. So. Yeah, it's cool to have a gal yes. backing up the goalie. Yes. We like that. Only, only <laughs> girl in the program. So yeah. it's, it's Good for you. Thank you. That's great. Two years going strong. <laughs> but... Um, you know, and one thing I always try to say to the championship teams when I get a chance is you, you have this for the rest of your lives. I was fortunate enough to be on one in high school, and we have a reunion every five years. It's something that, you, you know, you just can't take away. Second place is great in most places, but, you know, there's nothing like coming in first place and winning a championship. So, you know, make sure you, you, you have fun with this and, and you keep this for a long time. So um, I want to turn it over to Aiden, though. Most of you have read about, you know, all of his accolades and what he's done. Um, I'll just tell a quick story with where he's coming from. So I got wind that he was getting close to 100 goal or 100 <coughs> points in hockey. And I know him really well. He's probably one of the, probably, in all honesty, 26 years of doing this. He's like on a very short list, maybe top five of thousands and thousands of athletes related to academics, athletics, and just being a kind kid, just being a really good kid that you can talk to and, and just, you know, he'll, he'll chat with you like he's another adult. He's just a special kid um, in that way. And... It just came up, and I said to him, I said, hey, where are we at with, with points and stuff? And he looked up, and he's like, I don't know, 97, 98. And <laughs> so then we got in contact, thinking we need to be ready for 100. He never would have said anything. He wouldn't have said a word. 
and wouldn't have, I, I don't think he would have been upset if we didn't make the game and when he scored his 100. I don't think it would have bothered him at all. But I was asking him tonight, 112? Okay, and, and to be truthful, he didn't play sophomore year. He, he ventured out someplace else. So 112 goals in three years, three seasons? I don't know anybody that's done that. I that's, really don't. So. I mean, for that's, the freshman year, he had yeah. 18, so you can do the math. And it appears for us, he had 90 some odd points. Yeah. It's just, it's, it's off the charts. So. And he's playing baseball in college. I mean, that's his best sport. So, um, no, he's done some great things, and we're really proud of him. And, and um, he doesn't know this yet, but I was at the booster meeting last night, and we have decided that we're going to create a 100 club banner that we're gonna put up, which is gonna be um, any of the significant sports, significant 100 points. You know, you talk about wrestlers, you know, winning 100 matches, getting maybe, you know, 100, goal, 100 uh, points in hockey, possibly, I think he's close to 100 hits in baseball. Probably gonna be upset that I brought that up, but um, I guarantee it'll happen. So we've got some, you know, we're gonna start working backwards. And I think, you know, a couple of schools have that 100 goal, you know, that 100 club, and I think it's appropriate that our boosters last night voted to do that, so. You'll have your name up there once, most likely twice by the time you're done with Milford High School. So um, great kids, great group, but again, it goes back to leadership, commitment to excellence, and not making excuses and just finding a way to, to, to grind out Ws, you know, and in the classroom as well. You know, that's important to us, so I'll leave it at that. Very proud of these guys and gals as well. All right, thanks, Peter. Okay. Any questions or comments for... No, just congratulations again on a on a tremendous season, and uh, I remember having a conversation with uh, with you, Pete, you know, a couple of seasons ago about the hockey program and saying, "Boy, numbers are tough. We're not sure what we're going to be able to keep it going or anything like that." And he said, "Well, you know, I know we've got some kids that are really engaged in this." He said, "No, I'm gonna I'm gonna look for a way to be able to make sure we keep the program, but it's tough to sustain it. It's expensive. How do we do it?" Blah, blah, blah. And he reached out and and. Uh, that, no surprise, found a creative way to be able to keep the program and keep you guys playing and, and, uh, and, and gals playing. Um, and, uh, you know, it's tremendous to see the amount of effort and, and the interest continues to grow and, and certainly the, the exceptional results that you guys brought about. So uh, we're very, very proud of you and continue on your great work and good luck in, uh, good luck in college. Where are you playing? So, uh, Stonehill. Congratulations. Thank you. Good for you. A great school. Good. He's going to stay a hawk. It's good. <laughs> I keep saying that to him. Mike? So, um, boy, I have a lot to say tonight. See, this my last night. Um, over the years, I've always said to people, if you criticize the Milford Public Schools, you've never been in the Milford Public Schools. And this is another testament to uh, that statement, um, that we were able to take a program, merge it together, and, and have it continue on. But as I sit here, and uh, no criticism to the people that don't have anything on, but I look and I see Hawk, 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 Hawk. There's a great, there's a great amount of pride in this community. There's a great amount of pride in the school. And uh, that's what makes us who we are and makes you who you are. And uh, don't ever lose that. Don't ever lose that. And if you get the opportunity to come back someday and give back to your community, give back. Give back. Because it's a great great community and don't let don't let critical people change you all right you're uh, you're all doing a great job it's just amazing you're, you're proud you you wear your, your school colors and uh, that's a great thing that's a great great thing and don't ever lose that in life you know cut your own way cut your own course you know and to you young lady as a hockey player and a goalie I give you a lot of credit I wouldn't do it <laughs> but uh, great job to all of you and you make us very, very proud. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. Well. Oh, sweet. <laughs> hey, I just want to know, do you stop most of his shots at practice <laughs> all the whole time? <laughs> no, not really. <laughs> not do you drop those 100 on shave? Or? <laughs>
Coach and Kate can take front and center here. Kind of match. Good job. So, um, Super Kate, if I, yeah, I, I have to give you a quick story about that too. So, my kids talk about Kate all the time because they play basketball. They don't call her Kate, it's Super Kate with, with the AH at the end of Super. It's the Boston accent we got. So, um, that, they think that's her real name too, by the way. Um, I don't know when I started, I don't, maybe freshman year. It's just, yeah, just, you know, if you've ever watched her play, and I know you all have, I've seen you all at games and whatnot. Um, just the way she plays is very similar to the hockey team. Just grinds it out, doesn't make excuses. Just, you know what, if she's playing somebody 6'4 four or 4'6, four doesn't make any difference. Um, she's just been a tremendous, you know, physical leader for us with her skill set, but also her attitude. Um, I'm sure you've seen her videos and whatnot um, with softball. And then she also was fortunate to have won the statewide competition in the fall, um, talking about sportsmanship and leadership and teamwork and whatnot. So, we're super proud of her. The reason she's here tonight is, is twofold, and our coach as well. Uh, certainly, she is on a very short list. She'll have her name on the uh, on the banner by the time she graduates uh, for you know scoring over a thousand points. And for for anybody who knows anything about high school basketball, uh, like I said, I've been doing this 26, 27 years. She's only the third person that I know. Uh, one person at my high school when I was in high school, another person who was at one of our tournaments last year from Tantasqua, and then Super Kate. Um, and if you were there that night, wow, what a game. She had nine points in the first half. She needed to get 32, 31, 32? 32. Two points 32. In, two points in the first quarter. You, oh, okay, good call. So, it's, you know. It's a better, uh, that's a better stat to throw out. Uh, we had the flowers ready to go. We had the, her parents ready to come on down and whatnot. And uh, I don't think either one of us is worried about it. We kind of knew she was going to, you know, light it up in the second half and whatnot. But again, tremendous leadership, pursuing excellence and whatnot. But I'm sure you have questions. And this guy, can't, couldn't be prouder of him too, taking over three years. I, uh, we had a couple of conversations and said, hey, how would you like to take over this program? I think we both felt he was a good fit and uh, I think he's been a tremendous fit. So um, the two of them have done a tremendous job, but I'm just thrilled with what she's done for us uh, on the courts and on the fields and, and anything she touches sort of turns the gold. So we're, we're excited about what she's done and where she's going too. So I'll turn it over to the committee. <laughs> Any questions or comments? Yeah, just uh, I'll just start off. So, uh, a thousand points! Congratulations! That's that's amazing. Uh, I think I started shooting a basketball. That includes the little tiny one that you get when you're a little baby. And I don't. I think I'm still not at a thousand. Um, lifetime. That includes practices. So uh, that's that's really impressive. Um, congratulations! Just you know the uh, two points in the first quarter. Yeah, it was good. Were you just? <laughs> well, so here you ended with 33. <laughs> So, so here, here's where my head goes to. So, um, so I went, to, I did sports in high school, but I also did a lot of theater. And so I think about like, so, so when your movie comes out for your spanning of your life, that'll be like the really dramatic part where you only score two points yeah. and the people will be watching at the edge of their seat going, I don't know if she's going to make it. Mm -hmm. So you just, you were drawing it out for dramatic yeah. effect. I understand. So congratulations. That's awesome. I, I just, I, how did you, I, I got to ask, when the last shot to hit the thousand point, Left your hand. <laughs> um, shot, right? Yeah, shot. it was a foul shot. Um, it was crazy because I knew that I needed to make that shot to get a thousand. So I was like really nervous because I didn't want to miss it. But I had a second one, so I knew I had a. <laughs> if I missed that one, I had another chance. But um, when when it went in, I just started crying. And then I remember Jess coming out to me, and she's like, stop crying. And I was like, I can't. You have another shot. Come yeah. on. <laughs> but, she made it, by the way. She made that second one, too. Yeah, so, <laughs> so yeah, it was just a great feeling. Yeah, I'll bet. I would imagine. And you're, you're a senior? Yeah. Where are you headed? Um, I'm going to St. Anselm College for softball. Excellent. Yeah. And what's, uh, what are you looking to pursue? Um, Other than softball? I'm, I'm not, like, super sure right now, but I'm thinking business. Okay. Congratulations, they're lucky to have you. Thank you. So you're a thousand point scorer and you're gonna go for softball? <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Um, another great testament to uh, the Milford Public Schools. Um, I have to tell you that I had the opportunity to watch your coach play basketball. And uh, I'm sure that uh, he was a great athlete. He was a great player, he is a great person. And, uh, and you're very fortunate to have him as a coach. And I'm sure that his mentoring has helped you along the way. 
I know you do all the hard work. I know you do all the running. Um, and, and uh, you know, I sat in that gym many, many, not a lot of Tuesday nights, but many a Friday night. And I, in, I understand the intensity in that gym and, and how your nerves, TJ, you mm -hmm. can attest to it. Oh, yeah. Especially when Goose is screaming yeah, at oh you. Yeah, yeah. Can, uh, can get you, get you going. But uh, great job. Thank you. Great job. <coughs> TJ, thank you for taking the program over. Absolutely. It's people like you, again, that I said earlier, that make a difference, yeah. a difference in their life. And uh, don't ever forget that. And I know you won't. Good luck in school. Thank you. Good luck in softball. <laughs> Hopefully you'll change your mind and play a little basketball <laughs> as well. But, but anyway, good luck and thank you so much. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. Thank you. So uh, next contingency of champions is our track crew here. I want to see who takes the chairs. I think it's most packed up. There's never a doubt there. Um, so we we have been also fortunate the last couple of years, and I am definitely going to highlight our athletes, our student athletes, but also our coaches too, because um, there's just been this sort of uh, resurgence of, of commitment to this program. And I know people accuse me of being a trackie, and that's true. Yep, ran in high school and college and all that good stuff. But there's been just a tremendous, little extra special pride watching this program grow. I think I'm not going to ask you to quote because I'm not sure that these are tremendous coaches, but I don't know if they could answer me how many uh, records they've broken in the past three or four years. It's, it's probably over 20, uh, which is unheard of in this day and age. And three of them have probably broken like six or seven, or maybe eight. Uh, but I will tell you that all three of these folks are going on to uh, compete in, in, at the college ranks. And um, their colleges are very lucky because most of them, there are other colleges reaching out to try and grab them for the way that they've excelled in this off season. Um, you, have, you have record setters here. You have Hockamock League champions here. You have, uh, what did we get, over 50 feet in the shot, but 51. Started at, I don't know, 47, 48, and yeah. I think we all knew you were gonna get there, but that, that's elite, okay? Uh, you have two people here that, I mean, in all honesty, they are the dynamic duo in the league and in the state. <laughs> They're feared um, by the, the, you know, the Davenport, by, by the Kelly Rex. Um, we went one, two in hurdles at the league meet, mm -hmm. and then at states as well. And then uh, the one that didn't win the hurdles Went on, uh, Kim, sorry, I should go ahead. Kim comes back and wins the long jump and, and almost breaks 18 feet. And, you know, Spelly's on her heels. We had three kids placed in the top six in long jump, which is uh, Coach O'Connor's daughter. We didn't ask her to come tonight, but she'll be here, in, I, I'm sure, in a year or two. So I, I'll let, you know, Christine Speliakis, Lena Kibbe, Patrick Bajoli, you know, three of our premier, you know, track and field athletes. And they all compete in other seasons, but um, they've certainly excelled in, in this winter, and we're very excited about the spring and what they'll be bringing to the table. But I want to highlight these three over here too because they have kind of been this cornerstone of really rebuilding. Because you know we have had great track and field athletes and, and teams in the past without a doubt. But they have brought it to the forefront. Um, you know These three kids and the other captains and, and the other athletes that we have in our track program right now. Michelle is a former uh, student athlete here, correct? Right? She went on to a scholarship at URI, uh, ran some times that would rival a lot of our guys in the 400 meter, you know. Um, Glenn O'Connor ran, ran in college. He works for the Revolution right now. Uh, he took over our cross country program. Uh, we have big, big hopes uh, for where that's going right now with the gals. And Derek Rose, uh, he's a teacher at Stacy. Uh, third, third season, right, running our, our spring track. Second season, running our indoor, indoor track um, program. Just making sure that wasn't an alarm. Uh, so you know, and, and he's a state championship winning student athlete from his high school days, and also as a coach in another district that we were able to bring him over here because he understands the, the commitment that Milford has. A lot of towns talk about it, I'll, and I'll end tonight with that because I want to chat with the, the three folks that are leading us, but he knows that, you know, he knew me and he knows how, how Milford rolls and, and, and I'm just, I'll stop talking and let you guys talk a little bit. I'm super proud of this crew and, and where they're taking us and where we're going too because they've set the bar very, very high for our, our juniors and our sophomores and our freshmen coming behind them. So I'll turn it over to you guys and to, to this. No, you were not. No, I, I think the first thing that I want to talk about with these three is that they're also great students. Um, 
they work hard on the track, they work hard in, in class as well, okay? Um, and I think they've all built themselves into what they are now. They didn't just start out to be great athletes. They've always been, you know, had talent. But then, especially with the two hurdlers, they were pretty good, and then they got great. Right? And then, same with Patrick. Patrick <laughs> kind of found himself in, you know, playing uh, basketball, quit <laughs> basketball this year, <laughs> and became a Hockamuck champion in shot put. So that just shows you he can you know, touch the rim, throw a shot put 51 feet. <laughs> you know, he can do basically anything. Yeah. Right. And you see this kid, 230 pounds, running the 4 by 200 one of our faster legs in the relay. And you see everybody go, oh my. <laughs> <laughs> but overall, they're, they're great kids too. So. They're really great leaders as well. Um, I know I am blessed to have them as captains on the team. And they go above and beyond to get support and just be there. And they're really great role models too at the end of the day. I mean, I'm gonna be so sad when <laughs> I know they're going off to do really great things, and I am so excited to see what records you're going to break in this spring season, because I don't think you're done. <laughs> Just uh, So my, my, I always ask the same question. I just, so congratulations to all of you, and, you. and certainly um, all the accolades that you deserve um, for such a job well done, such an amazing season, an amazing year that you've had. Where you get, you're all seniors? Where are you headed next year? I'm going to Colby College. Okay. Um, I'm going to Western Washington University. Okay. <laughs> Washington State? Yeah. <laughs> wow. That's good. That's great. Good for you. Not close to home. No. <laughs> it's in Bellingham, though. Yeah. <laughs> different, different Bellingham. <laughs> They have the coolest logo, by the way. Look it up. I, I, she's promised me she's going to get me a hat or a shirt. So <laughs> I love that logo. <laughs> I'm going to University of New Hampshire. Okay, excellent. And you're all, are you all doing track in college? Mm -hmm. Okay, excellent. So just real quickly, what are your, I obviously we got the shot foot part. Um, what are the other events that you guys do as well? I hurdle and long jump, and I'm in the 4 by 2 as well. Um, I heard on long jump and I'm sometimes in the four by two. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I throw shot and disc in the spring, but in winter it's just shot and four by two. Okay. That's great. Well, congratulations and, and certainly best of luck. We can't wait to hear about your continued success and we know you have a whole other season left. <laughs> so can't wait to see what you do in the spring. Thank you. Thank you. So, Miss Kibby, knowing your parents personally, I, I would imagine they're going to be getting a, an Apartment out in Washington State. Yep. I've already moved. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, wow, talk about yeah. going away to school. That's yeah. all the way in the other. For sale, wants to buy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I always tell a great story. Uh, John Fernandes, the uh, former state rep, his daughter went to UCLA, out of Milford High, and uh, when she went there, he used to say to his wife, "Oh, when she graduates, she'll." be back and his wife would say oh she's not coming back and he, every year he'd say oh you know he'd drop her off at the airport at Christmas he'd say you know oh she'll be back and she took a job in San Francisco when she graduated so you better get ready but anyway um, I think what's important is um, what Mr. Boucher uh, and your coach talked about is leadership uh, that's something that's really missing in our society today uh, don't ever lose that uh, it's a very important thing um, as I spoke earlier tonight, uh, when I was saying my goodbyes to my committee members, um, sometimes you're going to have a rough path. Sometimes people aren't going to agree with you. Go with your gut. Go with your gut. But stand up and be a leader. That's what we need. That's what we need today. All right? Because you will make a difference. Sometimes you don't think you're making a difference. At the end of the day, you will make a difference. Congratulations to all of you. Thank you. Thank you. We got some gifts for you as well. <laughs> Kevin, you must have been shopping all day. Invest in pop sockets. Joe's probably going to take the rest home. There can't be any left. There's one more. Thanks, guys. Congratulations. Congratulations. So we're running towards the end of our agenda here for our <laughs> relentless pursuit of excellence with our athletic situation.
I'm going to ask Kate Lobeser to come on up. And uh, got a couple coaches here representing as well. Did, did, uh, TJ's here, right? Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. So. Take a seat, bud. You're front and center. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this is a different kind of award. Um, I will tell you in my 26 or 27 years in, in the MIA, I have never had the privilege until now to have someone win this award. Uh, I'll tell you a little bit about the award. It's Leadership and Sportsmanship. Um, there are approximately 440,000 student athletes in Massachusetts this year. Okay, every high school can nominate one, two, three, four, however many they choose. There's 376 high schools data. John, right? I know I have my data. Absolutely. Right. I try to have my data. Um, so I saw I saw the email talking about the award, and I very quickly emailed um, these two coaches, Coach Walsh and Coach Dolliver, and said. What do you think? We, I think we have somebody, and I wanted to see what they thought. Uh, they kicked back her name, which was who I was thinking of, of course, and then we reached out to Coach Weber, who was her volleyball coach, and we reached out to Coach Zakili, who definitely had you know, certainly great things to say about Kate. Um, so we, we, we pulled the nomination together. We all had a certain amount of um, time and space to, to build this, this case for Kate. Um, we sent it. I, uh, I secretly checked in with her parents. I didn't, she doesn't know that, I'm not sure she knows that, right, you know, this might be the first she hears that. Just to say, hey, you're going to get a letter or an email that says, hey, you were nominated, just to be nominated is a significant situation. And then, um, lo and behold, she was told that she won the award before I was. So she, she drops down to my office with this letter, and um, I've never seen her frazzled in four years, by the way, I've been with her for four years, um, never seen her, she's a little bit frazzled, and she's got this letter, and I'm thinking, uh-oh, you know, what did I do, what's wrong, what happened? She comes in, I read the letter, and I go, Wow, this is awesome. So I text her dad, I text the coaches, and uh, you know, she's the epitome of leadership and sportsmanship. And I will tell you, I know it's going to be a late meeting for everybody, but really the, the linchpin for me when it comes to sportsmanship, I mean, she works hard. If you ask her to pick up that table and, and run around the, the block, she's going to do it. She's not going to ask why. Um, but there was this moment in basketball against one of the upper division, Kelly Rex, where three of our kids just collided with this one gal. And Kate really was the main collision person with that gal. There was no, no foul, it was just a hard play. The girl thumped on the floor. I, I thought she might have been injured. The whole, the whole gymnasium was packed, right? It's always packed on the floor. And you could wait, you could, you could just kind of feel like everybody was waiting to see what happened. Kate just does this. You don't have, you know, I mean, you think about the NFL, think about the NCAA, think about the MIA. You don't help the opponents up anymore. I don't know why that went away, but it's, it's really gone now. Kate didn't think twice. Helped her up. They hugged real quick. Game on. And, and the place just relaxed. You could feel the, the, the tension just come out of the gym. And, you know, that's the type of kid we're looking for. That's the type of person she is. Um, you know, she volunteers at the hospital. I know she works with Best Buddies. I'll let her talk a little bit about that. But I can tell you that when I put the email out to the coaches, every coach that answered my email had her name on it. It was a unanimous decision that we nominate her, and um, I'm thrilled that she, you know, received the award. But you know, as I wrote in there, I said she's she's that and, and, a, and a lot more to, to Milford High School and what she brings to the table, the commitment to excellence, you know, the types of leadership that she demonstrates, and, and her sportsmanship is, is without question. So we're I know the coaches are excited, but I'll let you chat with her for a second. But my hats off to you. We're super proud of her. Thank you. Congratulations. Yeah, do any of the coaches want to say anything? Yeah, I guess, I'll, you know, Coach Boucher did a great job of uh, summarizing everything, but um, it'll be hard for me to probably, you know, see another student like Kate. <laughs> oh, my jacket's all, yeah, sorry. We can watch that all night. Thanks, Coach. It, it, I don't know if I'll ever see another student like Kate. And I truly mean that. She is, you know, Hardworking, yeah, I mean, kind, I mean, you, you, just, you can't even find words to describe the kind of person she is, kind of student she was, um, you know, goes above and beyond, and just a truly, truly tremendous kid, and uh, I'm going to miss her, so it's kind of sad, but I'm happy that uh, she's moving on to, to great things, and uh, hopefully she comes back, uh, but it's definitely uh, just an unbelievable kid, unbelievable kid. Thank you. Love you, kid. <laughs> Um, so Kate, where are you headed? I'm heading to Quinnipiac University to study to be a physician assistant. Wow, excellent. And are you, are you playing sports there? 
Um, I'm still not deciding. going to play a sport, but I'm probably going to try out for club teams, yes. Okay, excellent. Mm -hmm. so, um, so I'm going to embarrass you a little, if that's okay. So you've got all your coaches here that are talking about what a great job you do on the basketball court and all the things that you've done. So the Kate I remember had glasses when she was playing mm -hmm. soccer. And I'm not surprised to see you up here because you had that even as a little, even as a little kid out on the soccer field. Um, I won't go stand next to Kate because I look like I'm sitting down. Um, <laughs> I was going to bring that up. Well, <laughs> <laughs> not a secret. But um, Kate was a little taller than some of the other girls in the soccer field, and, and it didn't matter what was going on. And, and if sometimes it gets a little physical out there, I've watched you do that when you were well. <laughs> when you were a little girl. So I'm not at all surprised to hear about your actions on the court that day. I'm not at all surprised to see you up here. You've had tremendous sportsmanship and been a tremendous person your whole life. So I'm, I'm very proud to be able to see, see you here and be recognized for it. So Thank congratulations. You. Thank you. So I know your grandfather and I know your father very well and it doesn't surprise me to hear all the great things that uh, Mr. Boucher said about you because you come from a great family. Um, but Mr. Boucher makes great reference to something is that uh, the day that uh, there was that uh, unfortunate incident in the basketball court and you were the first one to go over and put your hand out and pick somebody up and uh, you heard me talk about earlier about um, it isn't just a game of life I get the game of basketball it's the game of life and uh, there's an old saying as you travel through life there would be people less fortunate than you turn around and pick them up and uh, that's what it's all about that's what it's all about. So, so great for you for, for taking the leadership. And we talked about it all night tonight. It's all about leadership. I understand that it's about basketball and volleyball and football and baseball and all these things, Mr. Boucher. But it's really truly about leadership. That's what makes the difference. So congratulations to you. Thank you. Congratulations to your family. Good luck in school. I know you'll be fine. But and, uh, thank you for making all of us around this table tonight proud. Thank and you. all the other athletes. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Good luck. Anyone else? Any questions or comments for Kate? Okay. Thanks, Kate. We have a gift for you, you as well. Thank you three of you were finishing your tenure tonight so one of the things I'll mention um, you've heard me say this anytime I get a microphone I talk about two things in this town and, and one is people power and one is finances other towns talk about it they'll tell you till you get you can run the marathon 26.1 and then when you get to that final point one somehow the people power doesn't show up or the finances aren't available and one of the things that I found with this town that makes me want to stay here is that you know this town expects excellence academically, athletically, and with our you know activities, you name it, and, and Milford expects excellence. But the, the key piece, and I say this to our candidates, and I say this to you folks here, is that you do make it happen. You do step over the line. You do finish the race. And for me, you know, this is the third district I've worked in in my 24, 25 years, and it's why you know I want to call it home, and I and I plan to retire from here if you let me. Um, but I, I just want to say thanks to all of you because I, one thing I don't, I, I think the, uh, the general public doesn't realize, you know, we expect our administration. We do 60, 65, sometimes 70 hours a week. We get it. We sign on for that. We know, we know what it is. Our families back us up. Hey, Dad's going to be late tonight. It is what it is. Um, it, it's, it's teamwork. But I don't think the public recognizes that you folks have real jobs and then you have to put in another 25, 30, 35, sometimes 40 hours. I've been on subcommittees with all of you. There isn't a game that I go to that I don't see one of you at multiple times or some type of function at the school, whether it's the play or whatnot. So, you know, I just want to thank all of you, you know, for what you do, but specifically you three leaving. I, I just, you know, I appreciate, I've had relationships with all of you, you know, and we've, we've had great discussions about, you know, why did we make this choice or do you think this is a good choice? And those are good discussions to have. Spirited discussions or supported discussions are always good because they press you to get better. And, and I just appreciate 
all the work that you all do, but the three of you, I won't get a chance to say thank you again, so I want to thank the three of you, and best of luck moving forward. I know I'll see you around town because I'm planning to stay, and I know you guys are moving on to other roles, but um, thanks for everything that you do, Much all of you, but you three specifically. Best of luck moving forward, and, and I just, I'll, I'll leave you with this. I work five or six nights a week. They're long days, but these truly are, you know, when, when, you, know, when you say you're going to school committee, some people go, oh boy, you know, long night or difficult questions, but I think the way, you know, our administration and our school committee has deemed it appropriate to recognize our student athletes and our coaches and our band and, and all of our activities, it's appropriate. It's awesome because, you know, it's just that little extra step that Milford takes that not everybody else takes. And, and it'll make for, a, you know, a longer meeting tonight, but it's important. I can tell you when I put this up on Twitter, it'll get, you know, a ton of hits and people will appreciate it. And for those kids to be recognized by school committee, I can tell you what, they all showed tonight. Every single kid that we invited, every single coach that we invited showed up because this is important to them to be recognized by you folks. They see you as a very important leadership body. So thank you for doing that and best of luck to you three and I'll see everybody else uh, tomorrow, Saturday, whatever, <laughs> whatever else we have cooking. So thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank thank you. Thank you. Thank you for everything. So we have a policy reading, uh, file ACA non-discrimination on the basis of gender identity. Um, who's going to be leading the policy discussion? I'll do that one. Yep. So, um, so this is a first reading. It is actually a new policy. Um, it, it's completely built ground up from scratch. Um, we did consult with council on this as well. This is a combination of <coughs> really a couple of things. It's a combination of feedback from uh, a couple of different, both the, the statewide um, DSE recommendations as well as, you know, some amendments that were made on here. And you'll, and you'll see there was a couple of red lines, very, very small things on there. See that we took out or, uh, or other third party that's really just to remain consistent um, with some of the other policies that we brought forth most recently. Uh, but this really is just a first reading. Um, <coughs> So we'll certainly just open it up. I know that we've, this was in our packet, so I'll certainly open up if there's any questions. This is really just to remain, you know, a, as we continue to remain consistent with, um, you know, making sure that we're welcoming all students and that all students of all, of, regardless of um, what their gender bias is, what their gender identity is, how they identify themselves, um, and, and really all students and all faculty and all, and all members are, are, all individuals are welcome here and, and made to feel comfortable, so. I'll certainly open that up. Any questions? Mr. Sir? Chairman, if I may make a motion <laughs> to uh, move it to a second reading. Right, motion to move it to a second reading. Do I have a second? Second mm -hmm. from Joe. All in favor? Thank you. Thank you, Thanks, Scott. Thanks, Scott. Yep. Right. Kevin, are you running? What's that? Oh, this is a mid year update, right? Yep. All right, so, report yeah. superintendent's mid year update on 2017 18 goals. So, um, Mike, Scott, and John uh, have just encouraged me and encouraged me to do PowerPoint presentations. <laughs> so the least I could do on the last day is um, do a PowerPoint presentation. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, the screen went down. So originally it was two and a half hours. I think I can get it done in an hour 45. Oh, great. Perfect. That's good. Oh, yeah. um, <laughs> we'll get it done in five. <laughs> and you just email be, it out. We're gonna, we're gonna, I'm going to try to be brief. I'm hoping 10 minutes. You've never been um. brief. <laughs> Why start now? Oh, boy. <laughs> get them in, baby. It's your last one. <laughs> it's the last one on camera. So, yeah. um, I, you know, this, this PowerPoint it has a, sp a special place in my heart, so I've decided to dedicate it to a member who has been the most vocal about the PowerPoint presentations. <laughs> <laughs> I told you I'm gonna get it taken off your computer. That may be the last thing I do before <laughs> I leave here tonight. Craig is and have I them delete it. <laughs> Craig and I decided to try to go for the cheesiest pose possible. Mission accomplished. <laughs> I love it. That's awesome. I love it. Thank right. you guys. <laughs> Alright, so let me let me get into it. Um, there were there were seven goals. I'm gonna read them to you quickly. Um, the development and impl implementation of a new strategic plan, the launch of one-to-one -one digital learning initiative in grades six through nine, math achievement and growth, expansion and development of early college high school program, the Milford Public Schools marketing <laughs> and communications implementation, the long-range facilities plan and assessment completion, and a move towards uh, more student-focused classrooms and learning. 
So I thought this was another great picture of Craig. Which is great. Yeah. <laughs> Anytime I can get Craig with a paper crown on his head, I try to include that in any presentation that I do. <laughs> Dr. Uh, Seuss Day. <laughs> the, uh, the first one is development and implementation of a new strategic plan. And we've, we've spent a fair amount of time talking about this, so I'm not going to belabor the point. Um, but we're in year one of the new strategic plan. Uh, at this point, you're all familiar with this graphic. Our four um, strategic focus areas are social emotional learning, equity and access, growth focused instruction, and continuous learning. I'll be meeting with the leadership team in the spring to assess our progress so far this year. And probably over the summer, I'll give you another update on where we are in terms of the strategic plan. The next goal is the launch of the one-to-one -one digital learning initiative in grades six through nine. This is year two of a three-year phase in. Uh, this was completed in September of 2017. Throughout this 17-18 school year, which is currently taking place, we've had embedded professional development provided throughout the year by the tech integration team. There's a focus on personalization, accessibility, and blended learning. And we have a pretty clear collection plan in place for the close of the school year in June. The technology team is preparing for the rollout of grades 10 through 12 at the beginning of the 2018-19 school year, and, and those plans are well developed and, and well underway. So I just want to, I'm not going to read through these, and they're actually tough to read, but they're in your packets. But these are just some of the professional development that's been offered by the tech department, and it's pretty <coughs> expansive. It, it goes from embedded coaching on the ground in classrooms where technology integration teachers or Dr. Joseph work hand in hand with teachers to full semester long courses, to learning lunches, um, to online resources and everything in between. I, I really want to give a lot of credit to the technology department and as well as the teachers who have really um, embraced um, the Chromebooks and the technology that we have available as learning tools. The next goal, number three, is math achievement and growth. And I'm just going to talk, I'm just going to share a few highlights really quickly. Um, implementation of ST Math at grades three through five. We've got a grant application for ST Math at grades K through two, which we believe is going to be funded. Um, we have a budget request for intervention mathematics teacher at Milford High School to ensure that every student who needs an intervention course is, enabled, is able to enroll. There's also a budget request for a mathematics intervention teacher at Stacy Middle School. Targeted tutoring is occurring at the high school level to support closing gaps in understanding. And we've been assessing time on math learning across the Milford Public Schools and at Milford, Milford High School, it should be MHS, not MPS. And Stacy have made adjustments and budget recommendations for the 18-19 school year. This continues to be an area of focus and, and will continue to be an area of focus. Um, we've shared the math data. It only comes out yearly. So we'll be sharing some more data around ST math as well as MCAS scores, SAT scores, and AP scores probably in the fall when that data becomes available again. Uh, the, expan the expansion and development of the early college high school program. We're offering three courses at Milford High School during the 17-18 school year. We anticipate potentially offering another two during the summer. We received an early college designation from the state of Massachusetts. I reported on this previously. We're one of, I believe, 15 districts across the Commonwealth that has received that designation. We also have submitted an early college grant in partnership with Framingham State University and Mass Bay Community College. Additionally, the School Committee has supported a request for $60,000 in the FY19 budget <coughs> to support early college initiatives and courses, hopefully during the day next year. That's what we're trying to get off the ground. We're still, we still have some work to do. I'm also working with, um, as well as Craig and Josh Otlin and his team at the high school on developing pathways and course progressions for high school cohorts. We don't want to, right now we're offering one-off courses. We want to turn it into pathways that lead to a potential degree or a particular area of study, whether it's business, the sciences, or the humanities. We want to develop specific pathways for students. And all the courses um, that we're going to be offering will fall under the Massachusetts transfer block, which will make them accessible for credits for any student who takes them for any state or state university or college, as well as um, they're generally transferable to most private schools or state universities and colleges in other states. The next goal is the Milford Public Schools marketing and communication implementation. We, we've talked at length about our progress. Um, we have monthly meetings. We're focusing on transition programs this year, strategic communication by building in the district, a renewed emphasis on print media, and then we're also talking right now in the spring about communication with targeted groups. 
So one of the things I wanted to share, and again, it's kind of tough to read, but I asked each principal to talk about, um, and each department had, what are some of the community events that occur um, throughout, throughout the year in, in Milford? And the list I got was staggering. And I'm gonna just let you look at each slide for a few seconds, but, but it's incredible. And you'll see a couple of the folks we, we saw tonight um, in that picture. No Craig and Sigley, unfortunately. So I'm gonna go back to this one. So there was, I think, somewhere between 60 and 70 that I highlighted on those four slides. And that was less than, I think, half, maybe close to a third of the things that are offered throughout all the schools in, in Milford. And it doesn't include our athletic events. It doesn't include senior week. It, it doesn't include things like um, you know, back to school nights. These are just extra events that are family math nights, global citizenship. Um, you know, We had the Italian American baseball family in the f in kind of the late fall, early winter, by the Global Citizenship Program, they were doing an I Learn America program in the spring. The range of offerings is incredible. We had Jessica Minahan, sponsored by the Special Education Parents Group. Um, it's incredible the breadth and depth of the of the offerings for for the for the public, for the parents, and for the students. So the next one is I'm just going to catch up on my slide is um, long range facility plan and assessment completion. Um, this year we contracted with the um, NESDEC to complete the long range facilities plan, which is part of the long range education plan. The NESDEC representatives completed their assessment in December and January. The draft plan was presented to the leadership team just a couple weeks ago. NESDEC is going to come to the school committee for the April meeting to present their findings. Um, following that, we're gonna hold a forum for the community to provide feedback and the plan plus the feedback will be incorporated into the Long Range Education Plan Committee and plan, which will be reconvening in, the May, in May of 2018, and we're hoping to have the Long Range Plan wrapped up um, early next year, okay? And so the next meeting, which is April 12th, um, will be, we'll, we'll receive a uh, presentation from NESDAQ. Uh, move towards student-focused classrooms and learning. And this is going to be an ongoing goal that will probably stay on for next year as well. Um, it's been a big focus of the evaluation process in central office, school-based walkthroughs. We've had professional development at Milford High School, Stacy Woodland, Brookside Memorial, and Shining Star, um, focusing on various aspects of student-focused classrooms and learning. Shining Star program um, on asking critical thinking questions is part of this. Center-based learning at, at pre-K and <coughs> elementary classrooms. We talked briefly about technology supporting student-centered learning and personalization, which is kind of new territory we're dipping our toes into as a district. We received an early literacy grant at Brookside Memorial, which is impacting practice positively. Uh, EL coaching grant, um, the six standards of effective pedagogy. You saw that presentation, I would say, a few meetings ago with Jen Lancaster, Jen Virginia and her team. And then we've done co-teaching professional development, which is focused on um, inclus inclusion classrooms with students with special needs. So that's, um, that's the whole presentation, and I'm open, opening up for questions. Open it up to the board. Any questions or comments for I don't have Kevin? any questions, but this was awesome. Thank you for all this information. It just goes to show that we're moving in the right direction in this district. So, uh, I mean, the staggering amount of presentations and events that everyone does, it's, it's mind-blowing. So thank you for all this. I appreciate it. Okay, so, um, Thank you so much for the PowerPoint presentation. <laughs> um, I'd be remiss if I didn't say thank you for that. No, all, all, all joking aside, I, I appreciate your update on the goals. Um, I, I know for the for the benefit of the candidates that are here this evening, that will certainly be helpful um, as as they get ready for their for your evaluation next year. Um, but I think just get it, giving an update on where we are and the progress that's going on for, uh, towards the schools. I I would, you know. And I've said this to you on a number of different occasions. I, I would say 
one of the most difficult jobs that's out there. Thanks for leaving that up there. Um, one of the most difficult jobs that's out there, I would say, is superintendent of schools. I, and I, I told Bob this when he was superintendent, I tell you the same thing. I think you should all have your heads checked. Anybody who would willingly sign up for seven independently elected bosses whose full-time job is to not be your boss and whose evaluation is done on television, something there's a little wrong with them. However, um, you do it every day. So I, I appreciate you, you, you putting this together. I continue to ask you to stretch yourself, continue to push yourself and push your district, um, as I know you do every day. And, and don't, don't be confined by what you can think of and continue to push yourself and, and think about you know, pushing those limits. Um, and continue to look and, and see which ways we can make this district even stronger. So um, I know this is just an update on the goals. I know there's a lot more to go um, and just continue to push on it. So thank you, Kevin. Absolutely. Thank you. Any other questions, comments, or Kevin? Right, thanks, Kevin. Great. All right. Craig, are you covering school safety? I am, sir. All right. Um, what I wanted to do today is just run through a few events that it's happening at every school just to make the community aware. Um, I do want to say that, that, that school safety is something that all the schools take very seriously and have taken very seriously, I think, for years. I think you'll find that, that if you go to any of the schools during the day, the schools are, aren't easy to get into. You have to go through one entrance and, and in most of the most cases there's two lock systems so you, you go in you get into the door you have to talk to somebody and then you actually get in again so um, in most cases and, and where it's not we're working to make that happen um, in short order so at Milford High School this year uh, there was in August they did a full presentation to the, the faculty on health emergencies evacuations and lockdowns <coughs> Uh, there were several fire drills or evacuation drills is um, another way that they call them. Um, there was a Josh Otland and, and this, the, the resource officers and also Scott Nelson of the Milford Police made a presentation to all of the Milford High School faculty, the Shining Star faculty and central office personnel on an active shooter response. Uh, and that was in January. On February 8th, uh, there was a student assembly that Josh and the, the police officers talked to the students about um, what to do if there was an active shooter. Uh, and then on the 9th, they had a, a school-wide exercise. Uh, so I think what I took out of that presentation was, was a very different message than I had heard in the past. Um, and I think the teachers heard a very different message too. And it was, a, it was an empowering message of, we're not just going to sit in a room and lock down. Um, we want you to use your best, best judgment and understand that nobody's going to judge you after the fact if you make a move um, in a, a terrible situation like this that you think is in the best interest of kids and in the best interest of, of keeping people safe. Um, and I think, I think just hearing that message for teachers is very empowering. Um, and I, I think the more that we are going around to schools and talking to teachers about that, I think the more that's going to be stressed, um, the fight or flight response. Uh, at Stacy, Stacy, um, they also had teachers at the beginning of the year identify different <coughs> areas uh, with students on where to go if there were lockdowns. Um, they did lockdown drills with uh, the, the resource officers. Um, in the f they, they also did evacuation drills they recently had a faculty meeting with the school resource officers to replicate the kind of presentation that was given here at the high school. Um, they have a crisis management team in place and they're currently working on creating professional development day uh, to talk with all the different teachers. They have a, a representative from each cluster um, to go over several procedures um, and make sure that everyone in the school is in the, in the, um, on the same page with that. And then recently over the winter, each of the rooms in, at Stacy were equipped with outside lines, which they hadn't been before. They were only allowed to call, or only able to call to the main office and then get out, but now every single room they can call out. Uh, Woodland, at the beginning of the year, they, they did the same thing, initial staff meeting. They had several evacuation drills. Um, 
in just recently in March, uh, they had a they had a staff meeting to discuss the response. Um, in in this case, it was a result of of fl what happened in Florida, uh, and they reviewed procedures and protocols with professional staff and this this resource officers were there. Um, they will be making time for the resource officers to go to each individual team during their team meeting time during the day and just to, just to be there to answer questions. And they've done that in the past. They've done it, I think, for the last couple of years at, at Woodland in particular. Um, and then upcoming, they have a, a lockdown drill scheduled for sometime in the spring. Uh, Memorial and Brookside, same thing. Um, they've, they've done lockdown drills. They've had fire drills. Um, they've had staff meetings with the resource officers. They've also had meetings in individual smaller teams where teachers can sit with the police officers and ask individual questions. Um, and they've made a switch in their protocols where in the past, before school and after school, their doors would be wide open because of extended day. Now the doors are locked all the time and you have to get buzzed in no matter what time of day at Brookside. Um, and then finally, Shining Star. Shining Star, uh, they, they've also done fire drills. Uh, they've, had, they've had the same thing with faculty meetings and the, and the resource officers now to review active training responses. <coughs> they've had a faculty meeting to discuss the lockdowns. They have not done lockdown uh, with the, the students. They have uh, purchased um, developmentally appropriate books, I guess, and have reviewed books with the students, but they haven't actually practiced them. And I guess I, I wouldn't want that. To, I wouldn't want them to do that with the, the little ones anyways. Um, and they've also worked out a system with the, the door down there um, where you get buzzed in and, and somebody goes to the Family Resource Center and, and people aren't allowed to leave the Family Resource Center. Um, and I think, I think our schools do a good job in, in working with the teachers and working with the police. Um, but I also, I think it's a delicate balance because I don't want kids to come to school and feel afraid that somebody's coming after them. So I think that the amount of time that we spend on, on safety procedures, I think is just the right amount of time I think if it was any more, um, I'd be nervous that kids were would feel afraid. So I don't know if anybody has any questions about any of that. Can I throw two things on before you jump in, Mike? Mm -hmm. One is um, I think it's important to note that sh safety is a shared responsibility, and I think everybody takes that responsibility very seriously. And the second piece is that um, student safety is nothing new in the Milford Public Schools. This isn't a reaction to events taking place nationally. This is These are ongoing discussions that we have year after year, month after month, and day after day, and we're, and we're always working closely with, you know, the Milford Fire Department, the Milford Police Department, and they're fantastic partners to work with. And, um, you know, the fact that we have that collaboration, I think, makes our schools safer every day. Um, Craig, thank you very much. I, I think what's important for the, the general public to know is that, uh, and I talked about this many times, and I go back to Cal Columbine High School in Colorado, they know for a fact because there was only one procedure and that was lock the school down. They know that those students unfortunately waited to be executed because they were locked it, they were told to lock down, lock in rooms, lock in closets. And uh, I give uh, Dr. Tremley and Dr. McIntyre a lot of credit because uh, Dr. Tremley brought a um, safety team in, I don't know, four or five years ago. And um, one of the first things they they stated and they implemented was you've got to have two. Mm -hmm. So if, if, the, if the risk is external, you lock the school down and this is what you need to do. Students that are in the hall, whether they go in the restroom, whether they go into another classroom, they're told when the alarms go, this is, this is what you do. But if the threat is internal, no matter what, get out, get out. And, um, and so we do do that. But you made reference to, and I think what's very important is that every single school, I call it a kiosk, so you buzzed in, and that's as far as you're getting. And unless you have a pass, you know, to get into the school, you're not getting by the second lock. Um, and, and I know some parents get aggravated because 
Sometimes they drop a student off, they get halfway home and they realize the lunch is in the back seat, or there's a book in the back seat. They go back to the school, buzz, now they want to, you're not going in the school to give them them lunch. So that's how serious we take it. And I, I use this as a great example, and I, I, again, I'm probably wrong, but three years ago at Special Olympics Field Day, there was a member, of the, a former member of the New England Patriots that came for Jen Walsh to give the awards away, and Meg Belsito, unfortunately, forgot to put his name on the list. Came to the high school, got into the kiosk, and said, hi, my name, and I, f I forget his name, and I, I, I apologize for that. Um, he said, I'm a former New England Patriot. I'm here to give the awards away to the kids. And the woman looked at the roster and she said, geez, I'm really sorry, I don't have you on my list. He said, well, I'm a, I'm a former New England Patriot. I'm here to give the awards away. And she says, that's all well and good. You're not on my list. And they called down to the field and Meg came up and she was all apologies. And he said, don't apologize to me at all. He said, this woman very easily could have gone and let me in the school. She said, he said, I wasn't going in the school. I think it's very important that people know we have two school resource officers. I think it's important that people know that every single cruiser has a notebook of every single school building. And if you drive around the Milford School Public Schools and you look at the external doors, they're all numbered. They're all numbered for a reason. So that if somebody calls something in, they're not going to go to the main door of the high school and then have to get all the way up to the other side of the high school. They're going to know to go to door 92. That's where the threat is. Um, I think that's, that's important for people to know. And I think it's also important for people to know that <coughs> our police chief, Robbie Ticino, and the Board of Selectmen, and I'm not going to get into it, are working on a program right now that we're going to try to put a program together that in less than 30 seconds, in, in Robbie Ticino's terminology, boots on the ground, in less than 30 seconds, we're going to have emergency personnel at the school. So we take it very seriously. We really, truly do, and I agree with you. It's, it's a hard balance. Mm. It's school. You know, think about it. You know, high school, the, mine, best years of my life, you know. Um, how, do you, how, do you, how do you find that fine balance? And, and in this community, we're trying to do that. You know, we're trying to take what's going on in the world serious, but we're also trying to let them get an education and be kids, you know. So we, we do take it very serious, and, and the community really is doing a, the, not only the district, but our fire and police departments and our safety departments take it very seriously, and, and, and we are working on it. So and I just, you know, thank you, and I just want the community to know that. Just, um, you know, I, I, I appreciate the update. I, I know we, we talked about this and asked for this update. Um, there's really a couple things, and, and Mike touched on a few of them. Um, part of it is that response time. I mean, that, that's directly from the chief of police. Um, it is a very delicate balance to allow children to continue to be children and continue to be kids um, and not feel like they're in prison, like they're walking into a prison when they come into a school. Um, you know, it, it's very, very difficult. It's very, very challenging, and it's, it is that delicate line. and, and uh, you know, talking with some of the police officers in town, they said, you know, the hardest part of their job is, is the bad guys only have to be right once and we've got to be right every day. Um, and, and that kind of put it in, kind of framed it up for me. Um, I do also think one of the things that just in the interest of school safety, but I think it goes to some of the recent events, but just things that are going on in, in our society these days. Um, we moved to go forward with adding additional uh, mental health professionals that we're adding into our schools. That's a huge, huge piece of this mm -hmm. as well. It, it's it's treating the it's not just treating the symptom, but it's treating the it, it's treating where the root of this is. And mental health is something that needs to continue to be addressed. I think we've we've taken another step <coughs> as a school. Um, I would encourage the the members that will continue on after today, and those that maybe uh, that are going to continue to come in. Continue to look at that. Continue to look for ways that we can support kids. Um, I understand there was a demonstration uh, nationally that was done um, of the walkout across schools. I know we had a, a, a representation today as well. Um, there was another one that said that there was actually a walk up rather than a walkout. Um, and I there's some there's a number of different videos around it. And I love it. And I would encourage if if we've if you've not seen it. YouTube it, take a look at it. I, I think it's a, 
I think it's a phenomenal idea. There's a couple different iterations of it. The one that I saw that I think I was probably the most um, poignant was in honor of the of the students in in Parkland, Florida. Um, they gave six, 17 sticky notes to every student in school. And what they asked every student to do is to put a sticky note on the locker of somebody that's brightened your day or give a sticky note to somebody that's made you smile that day. Very similar to your, um, to your bits of clay that you give out. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> so, the, which I love, and I think that's phenomenal. This, I think, takes it and magnifies it. And it gives, the, and it's, and it's in, in one of the schools where this was done, there was one on every single locker. There wasn't one locker that was missed. Um, teach, teachers were able to get it. Te um, administrators were able to get it, and it was just the students that did it. Um, I would encourage as we continue to do that. Again, it's not just, it, yeah, it's a feel-good thing to do, but how do we continue to address what that really that root causes? And mental health is just such a massive, massive thing. Um, and it's an art. It's not a science. And it's not something that we're going to get right right away. But the more resources we can continue to, to dedicate to it, that would be my ask um, as I'm exiting the committee this evening for those that are remaining and those that are incoming. Continue to look at that. Look for ways that we can continue to support mental health within the community, not just within the Milford Public Schools, but partnering with other organizations, Amy Leona's organization, Milford, uh, Milford Police Department, as we continue to, uh, and certainly, um, you know, any resources we can. Thanks. Thanks, Scott. Any other questions or comments? <coughs> Thanks, Craig. Are you going to cover for Kathy, too? I or? am. I am. Um, believe it or not, I have uh, four, only four warrants for your approval today. Um, That's unusual. It is unusual. Yeah, you're trying to keep not the meeting short. short. No. Um, the, the first warrant is in the amount of $5,304.82. Motion from John, seconded by Scott. All those in favor? Uh, the second warrant is in the amount of $123.31. Motion from Mike, seconded by Jim. All in favor? Third warrant in the amount of $37,010.97. Motion from Jen, seconded by Joe. All in favor? And uh, the fourth warrant in the amount of $145,596.75. Motion by Scott, seconded by Mike. All in favor? Uh, there's also a budget update for your information only, uh, personnel update for your information only, and there is one out-of-state field trip request um, that was requested by Reba Barros at Milford High School. Uh, she is going to take a group of 9th through 11th graders, approximately 40 of them, down to Providence College for a college tour. Uh, that does need a vote and approval from the board. Okay. Is this one of the college visits that we're funding through the yep. vending yeah. money? Excellent. Motion from Scott, seconded by Joe. All in favor? Is that all correct? Yep. That's it. Thank you. All right. Subcommittee. Updates, uh, budget, we didn't have a budget. The snow impacted a lot of these. Yeah, so uh, the sectors. budget was delayed. Um, it's happening next week instead. Um, although I, it's actually scheduled, and I hesitate to say this words out loud, at the risk of... Don't say it. There's, <laughs> there's another nor'easter. Tuesday into Wednesday. Scheduled for Tuesday into Wednesday next yeah. week, which is when our budget meeting is yet again <laughs> scheduled. So uh, you may be delaying it yet again. Is it Monday? Uh, Monday, actually. Monday. It's Monday. Monday. Okay, so, so you may okay. have cut it off early. Which you might good. be okay. So. All right. And wellness got whacked. With wellness the was too. whacked, so that's uh, yeah. scheduled for the 22nd. Wellness was whacked. That's a snow all winter. <laughs> <in the office. laughs> yeah, if we could go back to February and it was 70, that'd be great. <laughs> yeah. And marketing's the same situation. Right. We've got to reschedule. Right. Do you know the next stage? We haven't rescheduled yet. Okay, so probably next week we'll also send something yeah. else. All right. So no subcommittee updates. Uh, future agenda items, anyone have any future agenda items? Looking at Jen and Joe and Jim. <laughs> no Mike, you want to give them a list? Reorganization? I was going to say, we'll probably <laughs> just come back and hang around the audience for something to do, you know. Invitation to speak. <laughs> any old business? 
Totally business. All right, we do have an executive session tonight, right? Yes. Uh, to discuss uh, the Labor Council contract. <coughs> um, this does require a roll call vote, so I'll start over here. 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 Yep. Yes. I will abstain. Yes. Um, this is council. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Right. You abstaining from the council? I mean, it's, uh, uh, it's, it's not contract. Oh, oh, sorry. So then, yes. Okay. <laughs> it's, a count, it's a contract on my first one. So, so. That's all right. Yes. Um, all right. So all, all in favor. Uh, so today we have a motion to adjourn. Motion from Scott. Seconded by Jim. All in favor. Thank you, everyone. Oh, and we'll not be returning from the executive session. <laughs>